Welcome back to Come College Online Ministry and Encouragement. I'm Dr. Jewel Williams here with our Wednesday Word for November the 29th, and our theme is Tell the Story. And this is the last message for this month, and they've been really good. I hope they've been blessing you. I know they've been blessing me. Um, our scriptural theme is Psalms 51, verse 12 through 15, and I read in the Amplified. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners shall be converted and returned to you. Rescue me from blood guiltiness, O God, the God of my salvation. Then my tongue will sing joyfully of your righteousness and your justice. Oh Lord, open my lips that my mouth may declare your praises. And so this last lesson and it, this, the topic of the Tell the Stories have been about the deliverer. And so today's subtitle is don't invite in what God has driven out. Again, don't invite in what God has driven out. I'm going to be reading Deuteronomy 7 verses 1 through 4. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you. We ask you today, Father, to just speak to us clearly so that we understand your guidelines for us. Help your people today to know what it is that will help us so that we can be positioned, as we talked last week, positioned to take the possession of what you have for us. So, Father, we say thank you. Have your way in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Starting at verse 1. When the Lord your God brings you into the land which you are entering to possess and has cleared away many nations before you, the Hittites and the Gergesites and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Pergasites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than you. And when the Lord your God gives them over to you and you defeat them, you shall utterly destroy them. You shall not make a covenant, a treaty with them, nor show mercy and compassion to them. You shall not intermarry with them. You shall not give your daughters to to his son, nor shall you take his daughter for your son. Uh, for they will turn your sons away from following me to serve other gods. Then the anger of the Lord will be kindled and burn against you, and he will quickly destroy you. This is rough, but let's go jump right in. What's the first point I want to bring out is God will get rid of what is greater than your ability. And we saw that in verse one. It says, Seven nations greater and mightier than you. God promises the people that he will drive out the nations that are greater and stronger than they are. God is the deliverer. And as the deliverer, he drives out the forces in our lives that we are not strong enough to get rid of in our own power. It's by the anointing, by the power, and because of the blood that we can cast out these nations greater than us in places we need to possess. Now, we need to allow the Holy Spirit to have possession in every part of our land, in our hearts, that would be us. So we need to let first the Holy Ghost dwell within us, and by the power of God, we can then cast out whatever is trying to set up illegally within us. God said that he will get rid of them. He will get rid of them. And so while this is an, a, an actual takeover of what happened, but I want us to apply this in the spiritual sense. God is saying, if there's anything in you that's too great for you to handle, he's telling us that he is stronger and he will deal with the strong man and he will deal with those forces that are on the inside of us. But the key is always, again, we have to come and let it. The second point I want to bring out is don't agree with your enemy. And we said it in verse 2 and it says, And when the Lord your God gives them over to you and you defeat them, then you shall utterly destroy them. You shall not make a covenant, a treaty with them, nor show mercy and compassion to them. Now, this is what... This was the caution of the Lord for the people, and it was not to be ignored. This wasn't a suggestion. This was a caution, a mandate, and it was not to be ignored. And it's the same for us today. God said he would cast them out, but then he said for them to stay out, the people could not make a treaty with them to show mercy or, and compassion on them. Let me explain how that looks in the in the, in the spiritual sense because what god is saying is if i deliver you for example from anger don't pick that stuff back up don't 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 begin to make a treaty with it and don't have mercy and compassion on it don't open yourself back up to that which i've already cleaned out of your land out of your out of who you are so let's look at this first of all he said don't make a treaty a treaty is an agreement but it's much more than that it's a contract God was saying, do not step into a contract with your enemy because now you have committed yourself and it won't be so easily broken. When we make these contracts with the devil by way of opening and coming into agreement, because when you, when, when the devil say, well, you have a right to be man and you go, yes, I do. And refuse to let go of that anger. You have stepped into a treaty and an agreement and made a contract with him. And now that thing is not so easily broken. Then he says, don't show mercy on them. He said, do not show mercy on your enemy. 
This is, he says, this is, don't show pity on your enemy because it will draw you into a place to forgive them and give them an opportunity to come back into agreement or covenant. How does that look? Well, we can get into those places where we say, well, you know, this is just so hard and I don't understand. And we can start to feel pity for our condition. And we then begin to set ourselves back up to a place where we've opened ourselves up to that versus killing it outright like the Lord said. And he said, don't show compassion. God said to them, don't show sympathy to your enemies. They will draw your heart to your enemy and may keep you for what you need to do. And that is utterly destroy them. Now, before you turn me off, I want you to understand what it is I'm saying. I'm not talking about actual people. I'm talking about this from a spiritual realm. I'm talking about how we deal with the way that the spirit of Satan will come. And as he comes to attack, we are told in the scripture not to come into agreement with our enemies. Don't allow him to make you show pity to your conditions. Don't begin to feel sorry for your addictions or this is because of my mama, my daddy, or this is because I was abused or this is don't show pity and don't feel sorry for your conditions. So you won't begin to have compassion on those spirits that want to utterly, that, that want to destroy you. And how do we do that? When we are faced with being delivered from our strongholds, we cannot begin to make excuses. Someone tells you you have a spirit of anger and you tell them, well, I have a right to be, as I said before, I have a right to be. Then that's coming in agreement. You have contracted yourself now to anger. Or you tell someone it's too hard. I can't change because my life has been so difficult. That's showing mercy. You've looked at the outcome and your focus is to show pity on yourself because of all the bad that has been done to you. This thing blessed me and I hope you are really hearing what I'm telling you. You cannot show compassion. You cannot be sympathetic to your circumstances you cannot feel for yourself and be gentle on yourself and what i mean by yourself on the stuff on the inside of you when it's stuff that you know ain't supposed to be there you can't be gentle with it you can't be you know soft and peddling uh -uh. god says don't agree with the enemy so that you can utterly destroy that thing that means you need to pray, you need to fast, you need to curse it, you need to tell it come out, you need to come out of agreement with it until that thing dies, wither up and dies. Until it is utterly destroyed and the enemy of your soul can no longer then try to hinder your destiny. That thing blessed me. What's the third point I want to bring out? Stop trying to get intimate with what God wants to destroy or with what wants to destroy you. And you see that in verse three and four. It says, you shall not intermarry with them. You shall not give your daughters to his son, nor shall you take his daughters for your son. For they will turn your sons away from following me to serve other gods. Then the anger of the Lord will be kindled and burned against you and he will quickly destroy you. God goes on to say, stop intermarrying. The reason why is because it will turn your hearts away from me. God says, not only do I don't want you not to come in agreement, but I don't want you to marry off or to marry um, your your people. I don't want agreement in, uh, and agreement is different than marriage. When you marry someone, you have total access. They have total access to you, your time, your future, and even your now. They become more important than everyone else. God is saying, when you get into the place where you are comfortable not only agreeing with the enemy, you can find yourself that now your offspring, your children, will, you will allow them to become intimate into relationships that will destroy them. Intimate with relationship with Satan that will destroy them. And you will lose all that God has for you. And you'll begin to be pulled away. He said, you'll be, it's this pulling away. You'll be pulled away from him. And the God that you end up serving isn't, isn't going to be, and the, the God you end up serving isn't Satan himself. So I don't want you to think, well, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be a Satan worshiper. It's not even that. What I want you to understand is you begin to worship yourself. How do I know that? Because everything becomes about what I want, what I feel, what has somebody done for me? Um, why? Because the focus is on yourself. And I have a title for that. I call that the false trinity of me, myself, and I. And so we have to stop, stop trying to be intimate with what wants to destroy us. The deliverer has a plan for us and we have to follow his instructions, his way, because his ideas, his thoughts, his ways are greater than and higher than us. We can't see from his vantage. We have to ask him to lift us up so we can see from a clear vantage, but we can't see because of the things that hinder us from seeing. That blessed me. That blessed me. That blessed me. Thank you. Because the Lord has been doing that. And, and, and I want you to understand this before I give us what the life lesson is. That happens on so many levels. 
You can love the Lord and be committed to him, but you still have to be careful because the devil finds the slightest way to get in. He will try to trick you and say, oh, I've not come from afar off like the, the, the people did with Joshua. They told him they, they dressed it up and made it look like they had traveled a long distance, but they were one of the people that they needed to get rid of. Don't let the enemy dress himself up and make you think that it's something that it's not. You have you and I have to keep our eyes open and ask the Lord to give us the ability to discern so that we don't get tricked and we don't find ourselves in these places of bondage amen so what's the life lesson we need to tell others about the deliverer and his desire to give us an expected end however we can have an expected end uh, we can't have an expected end if we don't take the expected path let me say that we have an expected end but we can't get to that expected end unless we take the expected path, the one that God says for us. We have to let him position us to go in and take the possession. There's a way that seems right into the, in, in, the, in the heart of a man, but it leads to destruction. God is telling us and reminding us today that we must come out of agreement with anything, any idea, any behavior, Anything that destroys our destiny. Everything may not destroy your destiny, but some stuff can put a, a hindrance in it. Some stuff can put a leak, if you will, in your in your engine so that you're leaking oil or that you you, you just it's, it can slow you down. Even if he can't stop you, he can slow you down. But my thinking is, and I believe the Lord is saying he don't even want you slowed down. So are you ready to divorce the wrong relationships in your life? Are you ready to come out of agreement? Are you ready to say, nope, I am not going to, to invest in and speak in anything. I'm not inviting in anything God has driven out and anything God wants did. Let's pray. Father, we thank you right now. Lord, help us to get rid of what anything that's not like you because you get rid of those things in us. But Father, once you set us free and deliver us, now help us to not go back into agreement with the enemy. Help us to not go back into a place where now we, where the enemy not only comes back, but he brings seven greater. So Father, help us not to go back into those places of bondage and hindrances. Um, help us to be mindful of the tricks of the enemy and how he wants to destroy. And help us, Lord, to be able to, to walk in those things. Help us to not show compassion, make treaties or mercy on anything that needs to be destroyed in our lives. Father, help us to stop okaying our dysfunction help us to stop a man in our dysfunction help us to stop um being okay with this is the way i am because i have a right to be this you said kill it utterly destroy it so help us to get the power and the strength so that we can stop trying to be intimate with the things that you're trying to destroy in our lives so we say thank you thank you for healing today thank you for your mercy today thank you for changing us because we will be changed so that we're positioned to go in and take the possession in jesus name we pray Amen.